there in GT World, guitar techniques. Um, I want to thank Jason Sidwell for sending me this track to play to. It's always a challenge because um, he always throws me these left curves and these chord progressions. So you probably have this up on your screen, this chord progression he sent. And I'm going to try to talk you through what I did um, when I was started soloing on this song. Um, it starts off with the kind of pedal, um, and actually he wrote me, here's way, just to let you know, Jason sends me this kind of stuff. Well, more he's, a lot of guys do it for sessions where they just kind of write, it's easier for them to write the chords out like that. And then I usually transfer it over to him to like what I read easiest. Um, yeah, but the first one he's going like G, um, oh, and then a G like a Lydian sound with this kind of thing. This is tuned down a half step. Let me get a guitar that's not tuned down a half step. How about that? Um, let me get a guitar. Kick the cats. Alright. So, the song starts off with like a G pedal thing. So I had to make a. Right off the bat, I had to remember to hit that A over G, the Lydian sound, on beat two. Like, one, two, three, four, one. It's kind of a signature that would be a landmark or a signature part of any progression. To make sure you nail that, then back to G, the same kind of thing repeats for the first eight bars. Uh, and then on the uh, sixth bar, um, two, three, four, one. Uh, and then it goes to G7, it doesn't really change much right there. Um, normally, the keyboard player or strings or some other background pad would kind of emphasize that dominant 7th F a little bit more. And then it, it goes to an actual A chord in the bass where I just kind of changed to A blues. Uh, when it went to the B minor, because of where we were in the progression, I'm thinking my ear is hearing like a, a B, a B Dorian. That's my favorite. That's my most go-to minor scale probably. And then the little walk up. Um, so that's all. That fits in Dorian. If it's the B Dorian, then A over C is just the one chord. The four, the D is just a four chord, and the D over F sharp is just a four chord with the, with the first inversion. Pretty simple, straight ahead. And once again, it goes to E minor, which I guess if I were in the key of um, 
uh, thinking A Dorian, it's still close enough that when it goes to E minor, it sounds like a an E Dorian to me as well. And then to D, which is still D Dorian, I'm sorry, E Dorian or D major. A or D is still D E major. Now that it changes to C major seven, uh, the third measure of this section of the song, then I'm kind of thinking, and I usually let my ear dictate whether I should play Lydian or major seventh, but in this case, I kind of knew that it was, I think it's because they're out of the blue because the root of the chord is not in the key. I can, the Lydian scale would be the scale of choice. So on the C chord, when we to the, I was doing something for a while, like, which I've always liked a little movement with, um, uh, let me turn up. I've always liked that little movement with C major seven chords. Uh, it sounds nice and rich on guitar. It's kind of a keyboard voicing, but it's this. And then it goes to B minor, which normally, look, if you're playing C Lydian and then it goes to B minor, theoretically I should be C, um, if you're thinking C Lydian, that would be B Phrygian. But the Phrygian is a little obtuse sounding, unless it's in passing. So if you sit on it for even like a whole measure for a few beats, my ear still wants to hear the, instead of, you know what I mean? So because of the strength of the Dorian mode in our pop ears, I think when it goes to um, add to C major to the B minor, I think I got to C major 7, B minor, we're talking about playing, when a B minor chord appears like that, you can think Dorian. A, I was thinking Dorian because it goes to D7 after all, so that's still in the key of A Dorian. And then there's that one lick, one, two, on the eight, six, on the, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, and the eighteenth measure where it kicks on the end of four to E minor. I kind of made a point of nailing that. I wanted to hear that emphasized because it seemed like it was a part of the song that needed that. Um, so I did a little fast pentatonic run up there in E minor. I did a G, and one of the passes I did, I did um, on the next four measures where it goes G and then A over G again. I did a pentatonic, like a major pentatonic, and just moved it up a whole step for the A to emphasize that. And the B7 kind of comes out of nowhere, and it's weird, just a blank, a uh, uh, plain B7 like that. It was hard for me. I didn't want to make that sound too jazzy, because it is getting ready to resolve on the B7 chords. I didn't want to alter it too much. Um, so I made it just play some blues licks there, and then tried to smoothly get into the E minor. And then once again, we're in the E minor world. D minor, D, D over F is pretty much E minor. G and A again. Um, once again, I'm kind of, I always tend to follow chord tones, you know, the chords are changing and I'm not really, well, let me say this, if I'm not quite sure about uh, which scale to use, I'll sing, I'll play the song slowly, I'll sing the scale, and the singing the scale will always give me the right notes. Uh, and then I target chord tones. Then the, again, at the end, I went to C major, so I went to C Lydian, B minor, A minor, and then the walk, the little um, D11, C, A minor thing that it does uh, two measures before the end, I kind of did some little Hendrixy 30 fills things. Um, so I kept it pretty diatonic, pretty for the most time. If it went to, um, if it was a, a minor chord, because the song is slow enough, I kind of stayed in Dorian world for this particular one. I uh, hope that helps. I hope you got something out of it. It was kind of always fun and a challenge playing these progressions because Jason always throws me a few curveballs and they're never quite exactly like one. And by the way, the gear I was using, I was using a um, an old Japanese 54 reissue Strat that they made in the early 80s. And the distortion was all coming from my red plate black line amp, uh, just the overdrive section with a little reverb and a little delay, through a 1x12 cabinet with a Celestian Creamback 90 in it. I uh, hope all that helps, and I hope you guys uh, a lot of success. Get in touch if you need anything. If you need anything. If you need anything, let me know. See you.